Welcome to Commercial Property Roadshow with Helen Tarrant. In this episode, I'm going to share with you the pros and cons of commercial versus residential. Now, there's been many, many questions asked of me at all seminars and at my courses about when is a good time to invest in commercial? What's the key difference between commercial and residential? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through step by step what I see as the difference between commercial and residential and also share with you towards the end when is a good time or what to look for in your first commercial property. Now, in many of my episodes upcoming, I'm going to share with you different tips and strategies on how to invest in commercial property. So please make sure you press the subscribe button and the bell so you get the notifications every time I release a new video. Now, off we go. Now, what is the key difference between commercial and residential? Well, right now, right now, 2019, commercial property at the moment is a hot commodity. A lot of people are jumping from residential into commercial property. Now, why is that? Now, the main reason for that is higher yields, higher returns. So what do we call a yield in commercial property? Now, I've got other videos that will show you the different terminologies of commercial property, but essentially a yield is the return on your investment on the cash flow front. So if you're buying a property for 500000 and you're getting a net rental income of $40,000, that's an 8% return. So it's based on the purchase price, the, the rent divided by the purchase price. Now, most people at the moment in this market is jumping from residential to commercial because residential is not producing the cash flow at the front end to actually support the property. So that's the number one benefit of commercial versus residential. That commercial property done right in your first property should be giving you instant cash flow in your pocket. Whether that's you know a 1% difference between what you're getting from the bank and what you're getting from the tenant, like you know a few thousand dollars a, a year or a month, or whether it's 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, or even $50,000 a year from just one property. Property. Now, people are moving from residential to commercial purely because they feel like they need more cash flow in their portfolio. Now, residential has always been at the front end, you don't actually get any money. You actually feed the machine because you're waiting for capital growth on the back end. Now, in commercial, you have a balance. You have a balance of cash flow, you have a balance of growth. So you can choose to have either more cash flow at the front end, less growth at the back end, or more um, or less cash flow here at the front end and more capital growth in the back end. So you really get that control. So that's why most people right now are jumping into commercial because they really, really need the cash to support their portfolio. Number two reason why people at the moment are investing in commercial property is because of the long leases. Now, depending what you've bought in residential, if you bought a house in residential, you will probably have longer tenants. But if you bought an apartment in a city or a metro area, you might find that some of your residential tenants are more transit, which means that they're there for a year or 18 months or sometimes two years. But when they leave, they don't really don't take care of your property. So you have to do a little bit of painting, you do a fixer upper, and then you rent it out. You kind of get this rotation in tenants and a bit of a headache keep going forward because there's always minor things that keep breaking down. Now, these people are actually choosing to invest in commercial property as their next step rather than continues to buy residential. And the reason for that is longer leases. Being able to get tenants on three, five, seven, or even 10 year leases or more, depending on the type of property you buy. But these type of tenants tend to be on a, on a longer lease, but they're taking care of their property for you because their primary business or primary mode for these people to earn money and a living is in their commercial property. So they're not gonna trash it, they're not gonna let the toilet leak, and they're not going to just leave things broken in the property. Then most of the time, they are actually taking care of your property for you. And they're doing a really, really good job because they've got customers visiting their premise. So they want it to look tip top for their customers, especially when you have a restaurant or a cafe tenant or a showroom tenant. They want their customers to come in and go, wow, you know, what a beautiful place to do business. And I want to come back in. So as a result of that, your tenant is taking care of your commercial property way, way better than your residential tenants, plus they're staying there for longer. So three, five, seven, ten years, which means it really does become a set and forget type of property compared to having a rolling lease of one year or two years and then having constant phone calls from your agent to say, hey, you know what? You're 
this the faucet is leaking or shower heads not working or we need to send an electrician now all of those things start to eat into your profit margin and your return on the investment whereas a commercial property you send an invoice the tenant pays you you pay the bank and the rest for you to keep so and that becomes so much more easier to have to own and continue to grow your portfolio especially when you have a really really busy job now number three the third reason that why people are jumping into commercial right now instead of residential is that the tenant pays the outgoings so you can structure your lease so that your tenants are paying the outgoings which means that it actually eliminates one of the biggest headaches and expenses in your portfolio which is often the rates the body corporate um, water and sometimes even land tax and insurance is really getting your tenant to pay that because ultimately your tenant is is in the premise and they're running their business so it's just how commercial property works is that the tenant pays all the outgoings and as, as a result of that less money coming out of your pocket more cash flow which means that it actually be able for you to actually build and buy your next property faster and also you can actually use that cash flow towards your lifestyle so significant amount of cash flow whereas in residential you always have to siphon and keep a little bit of a buffer behind because what if you know what if you get a special levy what if you know the council rate spiked up or that um the water whatever it is that comes in you are unexpected you always have to have that additional money put aside so now people can see that in commercial if you're getting your tenants to pay all the outgoings there's definitely more money coming in you can just relax and use that money towards your lifestyle which is becomes a really really attractive but having a hot market in commercial the downside to that is that the yield which is the return on investment is coming down so people ask me when is a good time to buy commercial and i always say that there's never a good time to buy commercial there's never a worse time to buy commercial a bad time or a good time the thing is is about finding the right return for yourself so it's not about whether i should buy it today versus tomorrow or next month it's actually about where you want to buy and the kind of return you want so for example if you want to buy in a metro area so i'm talking about city areas so about you know buying in sydney melbourne brisbane the large metro cities well you want to get into that market as soon as you can because the yield or the return is coming down fast because there's so many residential investors jumping into that market and they're buying anything that has a return because when you match commercial up with residential you're going to get so much more in the cash flow front so let's for example you get four or five percent net return on your investment in the residential in the commercial space but in residential you're getting one percent or sometimes negative then obviously the commercial is looking better so people are jumping in there but they don't know that four or five percent is actually not a good return for a metro area that you should be aiming for about a six but they're just seeing that you know they're getting a better return than residential and as a result of that it's heating up the market so if you are looking at buying into a metro area you should do your research and actually buy sooner than later and i'll make a completely different video on it as well about the difference between metro versus regional so look out for that video as well in the upcoming weeks but if you're looking at re regional areas i really encourage you to actually do research into the regional areas pick places that have large uh, populations so you've got replaceable tenants and then monitor the returns the yields so because as the as more people are jumping into the market the yield will also drop in res in regional but it will be a slower process because people are associating more risk with investing in regional areas so you have a little bit more of breathing space you have a little bit more of a time to be able to invest in it so really spend some time doing your research but when you find a commercial property that ticks the returns you want that have the long tenants that also has the tenant going making the outgoings you should then move fast on that property so there's never a good time never a bad time to invest in commercial property but you should always do it when the when the property matches your criteria so the first thing you really have to do is to really refine your criteria and i'll make a video next week about that so really look out for that video as well about the criteria and how to refine your criteria just to recap commercial property versus residential what is best at this moment and why you should invest in commercial over residential well residential at the moment you are buying in a too high a base you're buying a million dollar property and your tenants are maybe paying you know somewhere between five six to eight to eight hundred dollars a week for renting that property and you're paying all the outgoings out of it so at most you might be getting forty or fifty thousand dollars 
gross from that property. But after you take out your rate, your landlord insurance, your water, all of those things, you're probably down to about $35,000, which if the mortgage is sitting at 4%, you are actually negative of the front end by about five to $7,000. Now, if you bought a $1 million property in commercial and you're getting a six or 7% yield, you're getting actually 60 or $70,000 net after all expenses have been paid because remember your tenant pays the outgoings and that means that at the end even if you're getting a four percent return on your on um, um, if you're getting a four percent interest then you are still clearing twenty thousand dollars in positive cash flow from that property so when you compare them side by side especially when they're in metro areas and in areas that all have the same growth potential you're getting a much better deal out of your commercial property and this is one of the reasons that people right now are jumping into the market so if you're looking at getting into commercial property or you want to find out more about commercial property visit helentarrant.com so you can get more information more tips on commercial property but also please jump into commercial property look into it a bit more do some more research because now is the time to invest in commercial property i'll see you in the next episode where we're going to talk about more things commercial property related thank you and bye for now